Hey everyone, my name is Seamus and this is my new project boat. It's a 1965 Glastron 14 foot, uh, 14 foot boat. Came with a trailer and a 74 Mercury 650 on it. Uh, the 650 was a 65 horsepower outboard motor. I've already taken it, dropped the lower unit off, which was pretty easy. Dropped the lower unit off, changed the impeller, changed the fluid and everything down in that, and got that back on. Today we're trying to get spark on this bad boy. So I'm just going to do a rundown of how the ignition system on these work. And if yours doesn't have any spark, well, maybe this would be a way to help. So this thing uses uh, what both the Mercury manual calls and also what the aftermarket manuals call a Type 3 ignition system which means it's pointless and the stator is not part of the ignition. So if you're going to go troubleshoot these, you always want to start back here at the plugs. You want to pull these plugs off, get yourself a little tool. This here is an inline spark tester. I have it in use on this coil, but um, that's not its final destination. So this is an inline spark tester. What we do is we put that inline right here, we crank the engine, we look for spark. I didn't see spark on any of these three plugs. So what you do from there is you come back here to the cap. Now we pull the cap off. I found that the brush set was broken off inside of the cap. If I have to take it back apart, I'll make a video about that. The brush set was broken off inside of the cap. The brush set comes up here through the middle and touches the rotor. And it's what sits on the rotor as the rotor spins and distributes power to all three of these ports. So pull this bad boy off here. This one here in the middle, that's where power comes in from the ignition coil. So we're going to follow this over to the ignition coil. Alright, so this here's the ignition coil. Power comes in right here. The way that you test an ignition coil is with an ohm meter. And you hook one connection to positive and one connection to negative. And you want to see something, depending on your specifications, but you want to see something close to zero. And then one to positive and the one on the inside. And you want to see something close to one as far as ohms of resistance goes. Now this can vary. Check with the manufacturer's specs on this. Um, yeah, check with the manufacturer's specs on this. If you're looking for specs on this engine in particular, I got a lot of great stuff from boatinfo.net. I'm going to include a link to that in the description. So we don't have any spark coming from here, which means we have to start digging into the CDI ignition. This here is the CDI ignition module. A CDI ignition works very similar to an HEI style ignition, except it has a high capacity discharge with capacitors inside of this unit. These capacitors will charge up and it'll discharge, it'll discharge for every cycle. So the reason it discharges is these coils running about 5,500 RPMs have difficulty recharging before they have to be charged again. So with the CDI ignition, it charges these twice as fast. So at lower RPMs, you'll actually receive three sparks per rotation. But at higher RPMs, you'll receive one full spark versus one spark at low rotation and half a spark at full rotation. So come down here at this unit. This unit has seven pins. I'm going to go ahead and tell you what each one of these do. These top three go to the distributor. Unlike a traditional or HEI system, this does not use pickups. It uses something called a trigger, which works very similarly to pickups. This top pin here sends power to the trigger. When the ignition is on, you should be seeing a low amperage come out of this. It's totally fine to test these with a light pin. So this top one here goes to the trigger. This one right here is returned from the trigger. This one will light up when power is sent back. Actually, yeah. This one will light up when power is sent back. This here goes to the trigger receiver. Let's see if we can see that. This one goes to the trigger receiver. When this one and this one light up, a spark is sent out. So, three connections to our trigger. This connection right here, I honestly don't remember what this connection does. Um, it it hasn't been an issue for me. This connection right here has been the power into the block. So it comes across 
this big red cable right here, let's label number five, and that's power into the system. Nothing goes on this pin, and this pin down here goes to the ignition coil. So, all of these connections you want to go through and you want to test with an ohm meter. And what you do is you just connect from one side to the other, and you want to see something close to zero ohms of resistance across the entire piece. These leads, they work. I've already tested them with an ohm connector. This connection here is good, and this is good. So I found some documentation from CDI Electronics. CDI manufactures aftermarket CDI uh, marine ignition systems. And it tells us how to test this ignition box. And so it has these two jumpers together. So this one goes to our pickup. It's not called a pickup. It has a different name. Uh, this goes to our trigger. This is a return from our trigger. We're just going to connect these so there's power going to both. This here is return from everything else. This is return from the trigger pickup. I don't remember what this one is, but it needs power, and this is power in. So what we're doing here is we're lighting up this entire block. And what's supposed to happen is when we connect here, it's supposed to light up everything and that's supposed to cause the coil to arc. So to test this, I'm gonna go and put the boat and turn it on. All right, so I know the ignition switch is working because with everything connected properly, this pin right here is supposed to be a constant power in. Yeah, this is a switch power, this is a constant power. So this constant power is supposed to be constantly in if you can see my test light, it's lit up, so we know it's good. Here, look at this boy. I'm connected to that. I'm lit up, so we know I have a good connection there. I should see a connection on this one, a very faint one. We can see a connection there, and a very faint connection on there. Now what's supposed to happen, let's make sure everything's in here nice and tight, is when we tap this point here, we're supposed to light up there. As you can see, we're trying to tap that point. I'm getting nothing. No connection. And it's not lighting up there. We're supposed to connect this to ground. And we know this is a good ground connection because it works on these others. And it'll even work if we connect directly to the positive terminal of the battery. So that tells me that this ignition block is bad. Now, CDI makes a custom ignition block for this entire unit. I'm just going to go ahead with the CDI route because it's a little bit expensive, but it also replaces this coil. It's a lot more compact and it all sits in the space of this bot unit right here. So that's how you test an ignition block. If we had come back through and found that this piece, when we arc strike on this, if we did find that that caused the ignition coil to spark, then we know the issue is with our trigger. Because it didn't spark, we know the issue is with our block. All of this assuming that you've already tested the ignition coil and the cable running to it. So that's all I have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. If you want to come back to the channel, I intend to do more. Um, I intend to work on this motor some more, and I'll also be doing some fiberglass repair and restoration videos in the near future. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.